Hi, this is Mike from The Run Testers, and this is our multi-tester review of the Garmin Phoenix 7. Okay, so what's new about the Garmin Phoenix 7 from a runner's perspective? Well, strap in because we're about to give you the highlights. We'll start with model options with the Phoenix 7 series coming in in 22 different models. You're still getting a smaller S version, a regular Phoenix 7 and the biggest Phoenix 7X, which offers the most features of all the new Phoenix models. With the Phoenix 7S, you're getting regular solar and sapphire solar models with the sapphire solar versions coming in at the priciest. You're getting the option of strengthened glass, power glass or power sapphire lenses either stainless steel or a lighter and costlier titanium bezel and all include a 1.2 inch 240 by 240 resolution transflective display. The Phoenix 7 offers the same lens options as the 7S with the same stainless steel, stainless steel PVD and titanium DLC bezel options. It features a larger 1.3 inch 260 by 260 transflective display and also features a removable quick fit strap. Last up is the Phoenix 7X, which comes in in solar and solar sapphire editions only, but does host a 1.4 inch 280 by 280 resolution transflective display with a removable silicon band keeping it on your wrist. It weighs in at heaviest at 98 grams for the stainless steel PVD option or 89 grams for the titanium DLC bezel packing option. All watches have a 10 ATM waterproof rating, making them safe to be submerged in water up to 100 meters depth. You're also getting Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and AMP Plus connectivity on all of the Phoenix 7 models. Getting into those key running features and you're getting everything you've got on the Phoenix 6 from a run tracking, training analysis, mapping and turn by turn navigation point of view. You're now also getting touchscreen functionality across the board and Garmin's latest Gen 4 elevates heart rate sensor technology. The 7X is the only watch to get a new built in LED torch and the Sapphire Solar Edition of all models gets the new multiband GPS, letting your watch communicate with multiple satellite systems to improve outdoor accuracy. Some of the other key new running software features to look out for are the new visual race predictor that better estimates race pace on running history and overall fitness level. Free multi-continent topo maps are downloadable or preloaded across the range and you're getting a new upper head feature to get a heads up on details on upcoming points of interest and key trail points. Features like Garmin Coach, Pace Pro pacing strategies, daily suggested workouts, and the recovery advisor are still all on board here too. On the battery front, you're getting improvements across the board. For the 7S, you can get up to 11 days in smartwatch mode, 37 hours in GPS, and up to 26 days in expedition mode. That jumps with solar also in the mix. Non-solar stats for the Phoenix 7 are up to 18 days in smartwatch mode, up to 57 hours in GPS mode, and up to 40 days in expedition GPS mode. The 7X manages up to 28 days in smartwatch mode, 89 hours of GPS battery, and up to 62 days in expedition mode. These are significant jumps when you factor in the solar charging here too. Okay, so what is this watch like to live with then? Big watch, certainly a big watch. <laughs> Obviously having the 7X makes it a bit bigger, but... Um, New touchscreen, I think, was surprisingly good. It's a really quite responsive, doesn't lag at all. And when I'm going around like widgets and stuff like that, I tend to now use the touchscreen rather than the buttons. Yeah. One weird thing, Kieran pointed this out quite early on, is it's not entirely linked up. So there'd be points when you suddenly have to go back to buttons. And what I really like on something like the Apple Watch is I always have weather on my watch face. I want to be able to touch weather on the watch face, go to the weather app rather than have to scroll. If you scroll through to the widget and touch that, it goes to the weather app, things yeah. like that. So it's little things, the refinements, so I think. For me, there was one major thing, which when you go and look at a past uh, activity, past workout, you can tap on it to get to the screen that shows you your recent workouts, but then you have to drop the buttons to actually go in to see the detail of that workout. Once yeah. you're in there, yeah. you can then scroll through the detail of the workout. <laughs> there's, you can swipe back, but I, yeah, there's just something about the kind of hybrid controls that I think they haven't quite nailed just yet. Yeah. yeah. I don't personally really use the touchscreen too much. Yeah, I think for me, I think like, comparing it to the last one it, it for the design language feels very similar in terms of what you're getting here the, the 7x is a is a bulky watch it was definitely felt a bit bulky for me on, on kind of my kind of slimmer wrist but obviously the experience of using it feels very similar i kind of forgot about that the touchscreen control yeah. generally in use of it but similar to you nick when I, I found it useful when you're kind of navigating through those screens and actually it's quite new and it was generally responsive as well i found where i was worried maybe it'd be quite laggy um in terms of the kind of execution of it but actually it worked really nicely i think the combination works quite well for me and i think yeah the 7x is a big it's a big watch if you like those kind of big 
kind of the chunky frame of it, then you get it. But actually, a whole I think the weight wise, I think it's actually not too bad. But yeah, I think it's like I'd be I'd be a seven user definitely yeah. myself rather than the seven X. It's, it's it's just slightly too big for me. But you know, some people love the big chunky look. The only thing also about the screen is that now I spent so much time with the Epix. <laughs> Um, the screen on the Phoenix, which is the same as the previous one, yeah. does look a little bit dull. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah, one of those things you don't realise that it's dull yeah. until you've seen how bright the, the Epix is. Okay, so let's get into accuracy. I'm going to start with GPS. So Nick, how have you found uh, the Phoenix 7 on that front? So I'm big, big GPS nuts. I've been, I've been uploading my tracks for every single run into the DC Rainmaker Analyzer. I used the Phoenix 6 for the past couple of years and it is flaky. It was it was usable, but it was flaky at times. You can see it would miss out sections, and it's definitely better on the Phoenix Seven. Like, yeah. I think the big upgrade across these watches is to going to the multiple satellites at once, and then the multiband. If you have it on the Phoenix, obviously isn't on the cheaper models, is a cherry on top. I've seen very steady tracks. It usually nails the side of the road I'm on, that kind of thing. But it's still not flawless. It still has the same problems that GPS will have in certain areas. It's just it just seems more likely you're going to get the best of GPS if you have all the satellites on and maybe the multiband on for a. I don't know, the multiband I don't think is a conclusive improvement for me. For me also, I don't really find that, I didn't see enough difference when I tested. I tested it up against an Enduro, I tested yeah. it up against the Epix, and I didn't see enough of a difference using the multiband and the multi-GNSS to, to make me want to part with that extra money for that. Hmm. I, to be honest, I found overall, they were sort of all within the kind of 10% ballpark. There yeah. was nothing, there was no major kind of, okay. in terms of overall distances, yeah. there were no major problems. Real-time pacing, based on the GPS, for me was a bit numbers all over the shop. I couldn't tell you, using the Epix and the, the Phoenix 7X, I couldn't tell you which one was kind of right, but they uh, did, they, they jumped and uh, lurched. Okay. And, but. So you know I'm a big lap pace guy, I love a lap pace <laughs> interval, and I can tell actually using the newer generation of watches in general, those things like this, even the Apple Watch, the Vertix 2, mm. when it comes to steady lap pace on like a rep using the streets, they are all an improvement on the Phoenix 6 kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but and that it would be a major quality of life improvement for me to have the multi GNS, yeah. but I don't know if it would be to get the multi band on top of that. I'm not sure it is so much. Yeah, I mean, generally the same for me. I, I mean, I, I had a quite a positive experience with the the older Phoenix, but actually I can see the benefits if you very much kind of focused on that kind of kind of supreme accuracy on that front. You are going to get that here. You are going to get an improvement in this department on the. The, the seven compared to the six but uh for me it was generally pretty fine i used it alongside the epics and a couple of other um garmin watches as well and from an accuracy point of view i was pretty satisfied with the runs that i've done and the runs i've kind of logged with them so i think kind of from a um, gps performance and kind of out you know tracking performance i think it holds up pretty well and then there's one feature that because we've had kind of pre-launch models we've not i've not been able to test which is up ahead yeah which kind of it basically you can you can add routes with waypoints and as far as I understand it will then tell you how far you've got to go and give you extra information about this and it'd be interesting to see how that kind of extra accuracy plays out using that feature yeah. when you're doing something if you can load like a race route and then you've got aid stations already marked how accurate is it when you're actually in the field I mean you've, you've got a thought on that I think Nick. I've put some routes on these watches I haven't been able to test up ahead but I think when a route's on a watch it's generally the accuracy is just generally better anyway I think even if it's got the little you can see sometimes especially with the old Phoenix that the pointer of where I am would be next to the route instead of on it with these new watches it's always on the route and I think you'd get pretty good accuracy there and as long as on things like Climb Pro and stuff like that, it's always been pretty much spot of me when it hits the apex of the hill and that kind of thing. So I think routing is going to be as brilliant as ever on this, with the upper head being an extra bonus. Uh, the only thing was, I, like, genuinely talking about the screen, so on routing, I found it harder to see the routes on the Phoenix compared to the Epix under tree cover when it's dull and the branches are casting a shadow on that screen. But, you know, if you use the Phoenix, you know how good it is already. It's the same experience, really. Okay, so next, uh, heart rate, and I think we feel very similar or about our experiences with the heart rate performance of the Phoenix 7X. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like optical heart rate <laughs> territory where, you know, steady sort of consistent runs where you're kind of, got sort, of um, sort of running steady, at a reasonable kind of pace, no problem. Yeah. When you start to do things like intervals, switch it up, it kind of can, yeah. for me, it can be a, a little bit laggy and a little bit lurchy. Mm. Again, comparing Phoenix and the Epics, I, at times I got this sort of yo-yoing where they were both read sort of high and low differently at different times and against it obviously against a chest strap I tested it with the pair to the Enduro so it's 
Yeah. It's a bit hit and miss. If you're paying this amount of money for a watch, I mean, what's our advice, Nick? Get a chest strap. <laughs> Got to get a chest strap. <laughs> so, like, I think it's for me. It's I think basically you probably get a better experience on the Phoenix the smaller model you get because I think smaller yeah. watches take heart rate better. In my experience, on my wrist, a watch this big just moves too much. And so the Epix was better for me. The normal size Phoenix is better for me. The X seven X is the worst. The seven S might be the best, but at the end yeah. of the day, I would rely on none. If I was using heart rate to judge a run. I wouldn't use it. Even on easy runs, I've had runs where this is read 20 beats a minute too high the whole time. Yeah. And like you say, it's, heart rate's an important metric. And if you're going to... And chest strap isn't that expensive. Yeah, and I would, I would kind of echo kind of Nick, Nick's experience on that. I think maybe there's that, that thing with having the bigger watch kind of affected the kind of um, data that I got. And I did my kind of interval and track sessions and kind of steady runs and kind of quicker runs against a Wahoo ticker. And I would get kind of excessively high maximum heart rate on the on the um on the 7x compared to the other devices i was using so yeah ultimately i think for me if you're going to rely on heart rate get the chest strap you'll get the results that you want i think kind of day-to-day heart rate generally it'll be fine but um when it comes to running you're kind of going to be let down i think from the for optical sensor you know if you, you care about that metric Okay, so the Phoenix is an outdoor watch and we have to talk about mapping. So what has your experience been like the mapping features on the Phoenix and how those have maybe mm. improved on the previous one? I don't know if it's improved really for me, but I, I love the maps on the Phoenix. I think they're fantastic. They're really well done. I just think it's the way that Garmin uses the maps on board that makes it better. Like the fact that you can create a route on the watch, like in a new place, just creating a round trip is very clever, I think, even if the route might not be amazing, but you just get you out the door. But I love Climb Pro, and I don't do loads of epic runs, but I did take this for a three-hour run in the Scottish Pentlands, and just every single climb just would flick over to it. You can do that automatically as well, I think, but you can, I always flick it manually and go, okay, you're walking this one because it's, it's just kilometre long and you don't want to run out of gas kind of thing. I think it's just, a, you know, cause it just tells you how much left you have in terms of metres on that climb. It, it is clever. They're really good, and they really make the most of the maps, whereas some other brands might just have a map, and then it's just not much use to it. With the expected kind of arrival times and all those kind of yeah. things as well, so you know, you, you know, if you're running an ultra, you can kind of get your head around a little bit how long you might at your current moving at your current pace, how long you might be before you get to sit down again at the next aid station. Yeah. <laughs> all those kind of things, I think, are, are really useful. I don't tend to use the maps much in my sort of regular day-to-day training with these, but I can mm. see that for me, they're probably the best sort of mapping navigation features that you can get on yeah. a running watch, basically. I think so. Yeah, I think they're top of the street, and it's like. Obviously, if you don't use the feature, then it doesn't matter how good they are, you wouldn't use them. But if you, if you are into maps, I think it's hard to beat them. Yeah, yeah I think for me, I could, would kind of agree that it's kind of head and shoulders above what um, everyone's kind of offering outside of, out of Garmin. It's not 100% perfect, I don't think, but in terms of the general experience, and if you are looking for a watch for mapping, it pretty much kind of stands out um, for me on that front. So yeah, all very positive for me on that front. With the, um, with the touchscreen controls as well, although you can, you can sort of move around the map, yeah. You can't pinch and zoom, which is one thing I, I kind of went to do sort of instinctively. Mm. The other thing is when you, you have to choose between having touch on or off. So you can yeah. control the you can control the maps with the button still. Yeah. yeah. But if you have touch on, you're then risking it being under a jacket and getting rogue yeah. touches. And it's a big ask, but I would really love it if when you've got down to the map screen, yeah. it would then turn the uh, touch on only for that screen as you're scrolling through. That would be yeah. great because then you've got the best of both worlds. But I yeah. think you'd need pinch and zoom though to even get the most. Because I use pinch and zoom on Apple on the work outdoors when I use the Apple Watch, and that's fantastic. Pinch and yeah. zoom is great. But if I think if I couldn't do that, I'd probably just stick with buttons because yeah. I think that's the key control, isn't it? Yeah. Almost. Cool. And another thing we want to talk about, or an improvement that we've seen on the Phoenix, is the race predictor. So, Kieran, how have you got on with that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically changed from just giving you time predictions for 5, 10, half, and full marathon. And now you get a nice little graph that yeah. charts your trajectory based on your training and shows you how your times are going down or up, depending on what you do. I think, you know, the times I think are still sort of not necessarily accurate for me, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. But I do think that the chart and the trajectory adds a decent extra layer of context which makes it a bit more meaningful because you can see how your training is impacting generally the trend 100 percent, the trend is what matters of all these things i think so i'm trending down on this even if it's, it's still wrong um but yeah and i will say all brands struggle with this i will actually say chorus's evo lab are much their predictions are much closer to my yeah. real world experience um the polar ones are crazy they're like, <laughs> polar ones will tell me like i'm, I'm gonna be a set world records in the half marathon <laughs> and then i'll do a hard one and i'll go hey you're not that fast. <laughs> Whereas these, they're trending in the right. Yeah, they're still away. But Garmin, I think, has been quite negative for the last few years for me on race times, mm. um, even when I've run much faster with it on. But yeah, the trend, you're exactly right. The trend is what matters. 
So one of the key new running features or running focus features on the Phoenix is stamina. So who's going to have a go at what stamina is about and well, their experiences first? Can I tell you, to get it to the stamina, basically the definition of stamina is the ability to sustain prolonged physical or mental effort. So that's what stamina <laughs> means in the real world. What does it mean to Garmin? I mean, they've, they've really... They, I mean, they're shooting. They're shooting for the sky here because they're yeah. basically this feature is trying to tell you how much left you can run at the pace you're trying to run, yeah. and and if you basically it's a screen that shows you how much kind of juice you have left in the percentage, or even yeah. how much distance you can like run still, and if you slow down, you'll get a bit more stamina. If you start speeding up, you'll it'll drain quicker your stamina, and it's all based on your, your last four weeks of um of your training load and all that your VO2 max. But I, actually, I spoke to them about it, and it's quite interesting. You could have the same VO2 max. So I mean, you could have the same VO2 yeah. max. But you get different stamina readings if you've just been doing long runs and I've just been doing short runs in the yeah, last yeah. four weeks. So it's, it's trying to be really clever. In practice, I haven't really found it's delivered for me yet. Yeah. I did use it in a cross-country race and it was quite interesting. In the first kilometre of the race, I, lost, I went from 95 stamina to 60. So I went straight yeah. up a big hill sprinting at the start of a race. But for the rest of the race, it just stayed there. It stayed around 60s and I wasn't losing much more stamina. In fact, yeah. I was gaining it at points. But I'll tell you, I, I was losing stamina in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I don't know, I, I think my fear is that there's... With a lot of these, there's numbers on watches, and you know, there's a negative side to some of the metrics that you might get. And this one feels like it might be a negative reinforcer. So you go out, and I think you, you'll key more into the negatives when it starts to drop mm. too quickly when you all the positives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just worry again, from I put my sort of ultra hat on, if you if I get out and I've gone sort of 10 Ks into an ultra and it's telling me I've dropped to 85, you know, do I start to feel really, really negative for the rest of it? Do I use, but I, I'm just I'm not sure about how the yeah. practical applications, and I feel it has a tendency potentially to make you feel a bit more down yeah. and underestimate what you, could do. Yeah. What you yeah, can yeah. do. Yeah, I think, just what, yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly think you'd end up underestimating. And I think if you look at this in town with the new updated race prediction, yeah. you can tell, I can tell for a fact those yeah. numbers are wrong. So I know the standards, but like at the moment the race predictor is saying, it says I run a 246 marathon, which the audacity to say <laughs> I, I would run a 246 marathon. <laughs> and I, I, right now, even now, I, I'm sure I'm not far off 230 shape. Uh, yeah. maybe a bit further than that but, I, but also during one session I ran a 35 minute 10k and I got predicted a 39 minute 10k yeah. and I, you know, I just ran a 30 as part of a training session so if that's going to show you wild numbers would you really, would you so, look at stamina as the key yeah I, can, I mean I can I can kind of see where Garmin is trying to go this feature I mean I kind of look at it as kind of their body battery kind of monitor and a bit of pace pro kind of pace track. it's yeah. kind of an a, a, a kind of amalgamation of those two things and I can kind of see but there's also so many factors that drive what this kind of stamina metric, like, you know, I'm reading into it, you know, it's it's based on the fact that you're having enough carbs before, you know, there's a lot of kind of factors to mm. it saying that this, how the stamina feature is going to work. And when I used it, I did kind of a quicker kind of 10 mile run, which I kind of treated it as a race. And I got to, I mean, before the end of that 10 mile, I mean, I got to 0% and I was like, well, what happens? What happens now? What does that mean? I cut, you know, I shouldn't be continuing. Yeah. Running. This is the point where I, should stop running and I find it interesting. I think there's so many brands reaching for another metric to gauge effort when they all do such good jobs of giving you a load of metrics that are traditional like if you're not gonna run on feel, which a lot of people would say I would certainly run on feel ahead of using a stamina feature, but yeah. I run on pace mainly and other people use heart rate and it's very hard to beat pace and heart rate. And if you're going beyond yeah. then there is power, like you say. Uh, I just I don't know if it's needed. I, I like, you know, they're trying to add something to a new watch compared to the old watch. Yeah. But maybe they even add this to the Phoenix Six, we don't know yet. But it, yeah, I think it's gonna take the amount of trust that you have to place in that, I think, is just too high. I think I would like to see a, f a few months more of my data and it generating that stamina information, and then me going and tackling a race, and then I, then I would get, I think, I would get a better sense of whether this is actually mm. valid. But at the moment, it feels like one that I'm not really sure about. And now into a really big Whoa. feature, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> which Nick is uh, demonstrating now. The, uh, the new uh, LED torch that you can get on the... Uh, it's only on the 7... It is only on the 7X. 7X, yeah, yeah I think. So, yeah. Um, the other ones have like a screen. Well, I thought yeah. this was going to be a screen torch. Yeah. And I fired up and went, Jesus, there's LEDs. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's got red ver and then you've got the red version Yeah, red as version well. as well. Yeah. Um, Nick, you love this feature, and this is the reason why you would buy the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as, um, as gimmicks go, it is, it is a gimmick. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favourite gimmicks of all time. I find it yeah. absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah, because... Two reasons you can use this, I think, is camping. It's quite useful to have a watch hanging in a tent. Yeah. And as a parent of a young child, stumbling through to the room, not treading on all the Duplo <laughs> and all the soft toys that get everywhere, it's quite useful. <laughs> to running, I tried running holding it as a toy. You have to hold it in your hand. On the wrist, it's completely useless. Yeah. Um, and basically, I think it's an all right second bite. 
So if you've got a headlamp already, yeah. and you just you want another light, you know, to point them without looking, without moving your head, it's it's just what I mean. So it's the kind of thing that if it's on a watch I already wanted, I'd be I'm happy it's there. I would yeah. never buy a watch for this. If, yeah. <laughs> if you're running anywhere that you need a head torch and you yeah. have to take that off and run with it, you've either run out of battery on your yeah. head torch <laughs> yeah. or you've made a mistake. <laughs> Okay, so a big one. We want to talk about battery life. Now, we should probably mention that obviously we have been using this 7X Sapphire Solar, which is kind of the top end one. So, how have you guys gotten in terms of battery performance on the Phoenix? Uh, so, it's been good. Like, I think there's been upgrades across the board in Garmin's range with the yeah. battery. They've obviously taken stuff, learnt through the Enduro, and you're now getting, I think, Enduro levels of performance on the on the bigger Phoenixes, which is great because, you know, it's always, obviously got the maps as well. Yeah. Uh, in terms of general, you, I had the Phoenix 7X in m the highest GPS mode the whole time, and I used it, you know, for running every day. I think pretty much, um, and I lasted three weeks yeah. with a lot of fiddling as well because it's a new watch, and I did play with a torch a fair bit. <laughs> um, so you know, and that kind of thing. And then one three-hour run in very like sub-zero conditions up in Scotland, it was um, it lost a five percent across three hours, which is obviously great in the in the yeah. top GPS mode in cold conditions. I think it's just going to last a long time. I think you don't have to worry about battery life if you're buying this watch. And I imagine it'll be the same with the 7, really. really. Yeah, it's that enduro level of performance where you can stick it on for a month easily, go train, you know, five or six times a week, probably with a long run built in, and it's still going to be going. I I got about, over two weeks, my Phoenix 7 dropped by um, 50% with about 10 hours of workout time. That was in a mixture of kind of the normal GPS mode and then sometimes in the top end with multi-GNSS and the multi-band yeah. on. Um I found, yeah, I found it was sort of pretty good performance. Overnight battery burn about 1% yeah. as well, so that's mm. good. It doesn't, it's not leaching loads of battery whilst you're asleep. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's also, it seems like the numbers they've given us, the solar seems to be much more effective. Like you're adding, what, nine days of smartwatch yeah. mode if it's sunny. We haven't had any sun here. I don't yeah. know, no testing <laughs> yeah. sun. But like, and then GPS only, it goes to 122. When I looked at the watch, I sent yeah. you guys these stats, because yeah. when they list, they list it as 89 hours of GPS. Yeah. Um, if I look at the watch in GPS only mode, when I charge it to 100%, it gives me better stats than that. It says it's going to last 100 and uh, no, 96 hours of GPS, yeah. mm. 65 hours of multi GNS, 39 hours of multi band, and 134 hours of ultra track. That's what the watch tells you at 100% in run yeah. mode. It's just loads. Yeah, and it's yeah, the yeah, 7X. Yeah, yeah. I know, and the Phoenix is, what is it? It's, it's not, it's a little bit of a drop off. You're losing about, what, 30%, something like yeah. that, I think, compared to the big one. But that's, you know, it's still very long. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you're looking at a watch that. I think based on our experience, and I, I've had mine connected to Garmin Connect, I have notifications kind of firing, firing out as well on top of kind of just general tracking and stuff. And it was three weeks, like, easily. And, you know, you're getting kind of enduro like kind of performance in terms of the battery and the drop-off in terms of GPS. Similar, again, it's not huge when you're doing huge amounts of running. So I think that perspective in terms of what you're getting compared to the, the older Phoenix, I think there is a little bit of a step up um, and if you want that kind of huge battery life, you are ultimately mm. going to get it here. Yeah, I, I, would, I mean, I do think that actually looking at the numbers, the 7X is quite a big step up on the Phoenix 7. Yeah. Um, but for example, on the old Phoenix 6 Pro, in normal, G I had a power saving mode on at night and I'd usually get through seven, yeah. ten days. I'm sure it would last two weeks comfortably and this is pushing three weeks even when I'm constantly fiddling with it. And, and you've, yeah, yeah, and you've still got those power manager modes. So if you want yeah. to be kind of more kind of aggressive in terms of what you're using, what's be in use, and that's, that's going to get you even longer. So yeah. one thing I will say, it's not, this, this watch isn't as good on battery as the Vertex 2, right? No, Vertex 2 has better battery life. Yeah. That's partly because it's doing a few crafty little things like not doing continuous heart rate. <laughs> so Vertex 2, you have to turn on continuous heart rate tracker and it yeah. won't do it in the day and that kind of thing. But I completely agree on power manager. I yeah. think any Garmin Phoenix holder, any Garmin owner who doesn't go in and set up a mode for nighttime, mm. Um, mm. You're, you're costing yourself battery for no reason. Like, yeah. oh, you just immediately go and set up, oh, here's sleep between these hours, you know, change this thing, turn off, don't make it linked to my phone, all that kind of thing, and you just buy yourself a couple of days for nothing. You won't even notice anything because you're asleep. Uh, and I think things like that, you know, so if you put this in GPS, in um, the multi-GNS mode, yeah. the middle mode, that adds a load more thing. And we, yeah, we, we're still not convinced multi-band is offering yeah. that much. No. That's going to extend your battery life a load, do the power manager, and you've already got a long-lasting watch. This will easily top a month comfortably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay so it's verdict time boys the phoenix 7 how do you feel about it what's your take would you get it would you upgrade what's what's your take nick i, I think this is a pretty big upgrade on the phoenix 6 All right, a lot of that for me is the gps performance being so much better i don't know if it's necessarily the multi-band that's really worth it but the multi gns is a big step up on and just because the phoenix was quite a flaky watch on gps at times and i, yeah. I loved using it but 
you know, I had to, I would be mentally accounting for its slightly madness on that front all the time. And you're getting a big battery jump, which is always nice, I think, on any watch. Um, so I think it is a considerable upgrade. Um, how you pick in between this range is very hard. I think <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. there's 22 different watches in this range, just to be clear. 22 different yeah. watches with lots of different things that it's, it's quite hard uh, yeah. to, to compare uh, yeah. and contrast. But. So for me, materials aren't a big thing for me. So I wouldn't be paying for the sapphire or the titanium. The titanium is a lot lighter. It is actually yeah. much nicer on the wrist, but if I was buying it, it would probably be the standard seven. I don't like that the multiband is not the standard one. I think yeah. the fact that that's an upgraded feature, I think is a bit of a shame but yeah. i at this stage i don't think i pay for multi-band because multi-gns is really good i so i'd probably look at the normal seven i think it's a good upgrade on the phoenix six uh, but it's still incredibly expensive basically yeah i mean i'd sort of agree with much of that i think i i love big bats yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the battery life is a big kind of um, selling point for me i asked these guys the question earlier if you were given like a thousand pounds yeah and you could buy any watch and then keep the rest of the money to go on holiday or buy yourself <laughs> something nice, which one would you go for? And I sort of asked myself that question. I think I, I'd still, despite all of the upgrades, I think I'd still try and hunt myself out mm. a cheaper Phoenix 6. Yeah. Mm. Or if I could find maybe down the line a cheaper Enduro, if how these compare. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm quite happy with the I use the Enduro as my main watch right now. I'm quite happy with that. I don't feel this does enough for me on top of the enduro necessarily to, to upgrade, but that's I don't really use the maps too much. Yeah, some of the other features I'm not so bothered about. I think the elephant in the room now is obviously the epics, which yeah. we were all actually surprised at how good the screen is. To be honest, yeah. it's, it's it's genuinely very important, and, and I loved it. And the battery performance has yeah. been good. I think if I was if I was given a thousand pounds and I had to spend it on a watch from the industry, <laughs> I would buy the epics. I think yeah, like I say, if you're going to get the rest of the money back. Basically, if you're shopping in the money, no object area, the Phoenix is now the best watch, unless yeah. you want the AMOLED screen of the Epix. It's fair. I think it's fair to say that, at least. Yeah. I think, like, for me, obviously, that with the, with the 7X, is a bit too much watch for me in terms of it. I, I would probably, similar to Nick, I would probably go for the smaller kind of 7. But ultimately, it gave me all the things that I would hope to get from a Phoenix watch, the kind of accuracy performance, the kind of mapping, if you want the mapping, the battery life is kind of feels a little bit more on par of what you're getting from the Enduro, which is the reason I was continue still wearing the enduro and i think from that perspective you're getting some kind of nice upgrades on the six but i do think for a lot of people the, the six will serve you kind of really well i st still think and if you can kind of get it at a good price i still think it's a good watch to get but if you kind of want that supreme accuracy um you want that kind of that touch screen as well um element um in your watch as well and all those kind of smart watch and kind of bits and pieces you get then there's a lot to kind of see from the seven to kind of warrant going for that i think as well so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna put a word in for the vertex too as well just because it's mm. it's cheaper yeah than the it's cheaper than most of the range of the of the phoenix yeah. it's cheaper than the equivalent in terms <laughs> of materials definitely yeah. yeah and you know you get that extra battery life so if battery life that really long battery life yeah whilst you're and you're not too bothered about the surrounding features that you know yeah. the daily features all that kind of stuff then i think the vertex for running long going ultra yeah. i think there's an argument for it if, you, if, you, yeah. if you're looking for something yeah, it's, with a bit of value. it's essentially cutting out all the kind mm. of the smartwatch and the other kind of bits and pieces that Garmin is doing when you're not tracking, which he's not really getting in the cross. You're getting the very basics of that. But if you want that huge battery life, things like the navigation, things like, from that perspective in terms of that support, then it's strong there as well. Yeah, um, I, I do think actually the maps and the Garmin are, are leaps ahead of the chorus, but yeah. I do think they'll continue to improve it. But yeah, yeah I. I think yeah, it's, it's still the best watch. It's still very expensive. You know by now yeah. if you want to spend the money on a Phoenix. If you if you have a flat choice now, I would be getting the Phoenix Seven over the Phoenix Six because yeah. I do want that little bit of extra accuracy in the battery. The Phoenix Six is two hundred pounds cheaper. Well, then it's a different conversation, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finally gets, it did drop as low as like three hundred and fifty, three hundred and eighty pounds in sales recently. Yeah, that's an incredible bargain. But if you're a big GPS obsessive, the Phoenix is quite a flaky watch. But not in a way that makes it at all unusable. It's just now there's something better. I'd probably want something a bit more accurate. Cool. Well, there you have it. That is our verdict on the Phoenix 7. We've got plenty of other videos on the channel. <laughs> oh boy, do Garmin, we. Garmin related, <laughs> so definitely go and check those out. As always, like and subscribe. Hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos. And yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Testers video.